What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey, and welcome to another Miniature Rescue. This week, we're going to rescue some old hammer and some new old hammer. This video has been sponsored by Fume, but more on that in a little bit. A while back, I was gearing up to start a Daughters of Cain army for Warhammer Age of Sigmar, and I still very much want to do that. The problem is that I want to mix a lot of the newer stuff and the older stuff that I really like, but it's getting more expensive and harder to find. I put the project aside after completing Marathi, because the model ended up being a huge pile of mistakes. Weirdly, I very much enjoyed the final paint job, but there's a lot of texture and dust trapped under the paint that I did not want to be on the model. It was one of those mistakes that killed my motivation to continue on the project and it's been shelved ever since. I even have a ton of models that are ready to go for the army, but I haven't wanted to get them out to put in any effort. That started to change a little bit, not too long ago though. I stumbled across a very interesting Kickstarter for, weirdly, some orcs that I thought looked incredibly well done and reminiscent of old Hammer orcs that I happened to like quite a bit. Turns out, those models were sculpted by an old Games Workshop sculptor named Kev Adams. And these were brand new, about to be made, minis. And that kind of got me thinking. Warhammer is pretty old, but honestly not so old that the people who started it or worked on it in the early days are just gone from the industry. I mean, they have some pretty specific skill sets, and it's kind of ridiculous to think that if they don't work at Games Workshop anymore, that they wouldn't still be doing something similar today. And I should know better anyways. When I painted Marathi, I talked quite a bit about the original sculptor and his current project, Crocodile Games. But seeing those Kev Adams minis, and subsequently buying them all, made me want to look a little deeper. By no means do I have a complete list or know about all of the older Games Workshop sculptors or models, but here's some really cool ones that I came across. Now, obviously, I mentioned Kev Adams, and here are some of the minis I just recently painted that he made in the early 90s. And here's an orc that came out last year, just as awesome, but way more modern, and something that can be purchased now and slot right into an old world army today. A while back, I painted this absolutely epic troll hag that was sculpted by Trish Carton. She has amazing monsters and dragons and has contributed a ton to the history of Games Workshop minis. You can buy models that she's sculpted right now that aren't Games Workshop, and they're awesome. They look great, and you can see that DNA throughout all of her models. Alan and Michael Perry worked for GW up until 2014 and have since moved on to creating their own miniatures line through Perry Miniatures. They focus on historical wargaming, but you can still see their work throughout a ton of Warhammer minis and buy new models from them right now. It's just kind of weird to think that there are still so many minis being made by some of the people who probably sculpted your favorite models. Their individual style can be felt throughout Warhammer going all the way back to the beginning. You can just go online and buy brand new models from them now. In terms of proxy armies, I don't think you can get any better than that. The style and feel of older models for the old world, for example, can still be obtained and played now using those new models. The sad reality of today is that GW doesn't give the same kind of credit to the sculptors they have now. And whatever their reasoning, it takes away something from the long-term success and collectability of their minis. Not knowing who did what model makes it impossible to look back and find the things that you enjoy and have that realization that it's because of how someone made the models you like. In 30 years, you might not know who made your favorite models today, and they might have moved on to another company and you wouldn't even know. Honestly, it's just kind of sad, and I hope that it's something that we will see changed in the future, because those people made things that we care about, and they deserve the credit. I'm not quite sure why this hit me so hard, but it feels like something that doesn't get talked about enough. Some of your favorite sculptors are still making models, and that's something to get excited about. I'll put some links in the description of a handful of people still doing really good work. Check them out, see what they have. You might be surprised at how prolific some of them still are. That brings us to this week's models, and a new beginning to that Daughters of Cain army that I shelved so many months ago. It was over a year now. Chris Fitzpatrick from Crocodile Games sculpted the original Marathi, 
And before you tell me it's not, because some of you have before, he specifically said it was, regardless of how GW labels it now. So it is, it's her. I purchased these on eBay a while back and they both need some work. The paint on the newer mini doesn't look too bad, but I know that there is extra dust and texture under that paint that I didn't clean off when I painted the big Marathi last time, so I'm not gonna make that mistake again. The older mini is prime, but it's old and the paint is starting to flake off in a few places. So they both need to go into the Sonic Cleaner filled with LA's Totally Awesome to get all of that paint off and get them ready for painting. But before that, let me tell you about today's excellent sponsor. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about using some magic liquid that makes you a world-class painter, no oil. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it, instead of bad, Fume is good and it's a habit you're free to enjoy and make replacing your bad habit easy. It fills the void in a natural guilt-free way. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing while breaking your habit. Base was launched in January. It's a weighted stand to rest your fume on when not in use, with a magnet inside that keeps your fume attached. The fume device can be spun around on it, which is also good for fidgeting. Personally, I was surprised by how much the clicking and spinning and popping in the metal parts actually, you know, helped me calm down and focus on what I was doing. It's very satisfying to hold and feel the weight of in your hand while you're doing other things. Stopping is something that we all put off because it's hard, but switching to fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. There's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash eBay miniature or scan the QR code and use code eBay miniature to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code eBay miniature to save an additional 10% off your order today. Once again, thanks to Fume for sponsoring this video and miniature painters. Now let's get back to those little Marathi. Now that the models have had a bath, I'm going to come in with a toothbrush to remove all of the paint and start to clean up the mold lines on the models. The reason I'm painting both of these models this week is to give myself options for the army moving forward. I really like the older Marathi, and I would prefer to have her on the table to transform into the giant version. But I also picked up a newer sculpt from Crocodile Games that gave me some serious Marathi vibes, and I wanted to use that as well. Now for YouTube's sake, I can't exactly paint up this model on camera and I'm sure you might know why. So I'm sticking with the still awesome older sculpt for the video and I will be painting the new one completely off camera, mostly. Still, in bare metal, you can see what I mean by the sculpting DNA passing through the generations. It's just so cool to see similar lines and features on a new model and it reminds me of the things that I like about the older one, just done now with years of experience in forming the new sculpt. The old model is still great, but she needs an updated base to pass for the new one in a game. So let's get out some basing materials and put something together. I've had some square bases lying around that were for an orc wyvern that I painted up not too long ago. And I made sure to print out a few of these really nice rock bases just in case I needed more if something were to happen with the prints. You can't be too careful sometimes. I really want my little Marathi to feel similar to the new one. So I decided to break off some of the nicer stone structures from the base and use that as rubble. Some larger stones go down to fill in some of the gaps and a nice layer of beach sand to tie everything together. This is a great way to get quick, great looking bases on the table. Large standout pieces, medium pieces to fill holes and keep things in scale in sand to cover the rest. Some of my favorite bases are done like this and they generally turn out pretty great even on a large army scale. Thank you. 
Once the base is primed, I'm going to lay out a couple of colors to wet blend together. I want some earth tones for the sand and mix in some cool blues for the stone. Some of the larger rocks get a little bit of blue near the top, but I'm mostly sticking to the larger stones to give that contrast. Eventually, the model will be a similar contrasting color with lots of reds and gold, so I want the stone to stand out on the base. To tie everything together and pull out more texture, a quick dry brush of ivory over the top. It's not too heavy, but it definitely brings out the rocks and the stones, all that texture. The idea for the whole army will be a stone and grass base contrasting with the red cloth and gold on the models. Something that stands out nicely and has that kind of old Greek feeling. I put down a nice variety of plants that have some brown and yellow for variety and then cover most of the sand and rocks with some green grass. You can still see the reddish brown dirt through a lot of the grass and especially once it's dry it will have that nice contrast. I finish it all off with a few red leaves just to break up the green and keep the theme for the model. All in all, quick and easy while still looking like I spent a good amount of time. Something you can do across an entire army and something that will help them stand out while being nice and cohesive. Here are the two metal minis side by side, looking pretty good together, and their bases match nicely, so I could swap them out whenever I need to or, you know, when it's appropriate. I did cut the slotters off both of these minis. They need to sit flat on the bases and I'm not really planning on using square bases for these, at least for now. I put Metal Marathi on a stand-in base for now so I could prime her up and use the airbrush without ruining my finished base. The other one, or actually I haven't even mentioned what model she actually is, it's Hecate, the Greek god, for War Gods of Olympus. Definitely not Marathi, but I like the sculpt and it definitely makes sense to me. Anyways, I'm probably going to paint her with just a brush, so no need to separate her from the base. I primed everything up and started with the zenithal highlight for both models, or all three. Now, I don't mention specific paints very often, and I have reasons for that, but I need to talk about this new paint that I just got. The white I'm using for the zenithal is called the White Zenithal, go figure, from the New Worlds paint line from Iowata. I picked this up at the Iowata booth at Adepticon this year, and at first, you know, I was a little skeptical, but wow, this white goes on so smooth with little to no speckling, nicer than any other white that I've ever used through the airbrush. And for a zenithal highlight over black, not even Liquitex white ink has ever been better than this. This isn't sponsored by them, although they did give me a few for free to test out. And so far, it's pretty incredible. So I'll try more and I'll try and keep you updated with the results. So far, this will 100% replace white ink for me. The plan is to work on all three models, while mostly only showing two of them. So let's start with the red that will match the large Marathi. The cloth will be the same red across all of the models, and I'm going for really bright colors. So a dark purple red to start, and I'll follow that up with a vibrant bright red. To bring back some of the shadows, I decided on some transparent purple from that same New Worlds paint line. Figured I might as well test more while I'm at it, and this one did not disappoint either. The color is strong but it's not completely opaque going on, so it shades evenly and brings back the shadows on the model. The way it lays down on this cloak is a great example. The color builds up very slowly, and you can see just how smooth the transitions are in those shadows, exactly what I'm looking for in a transparent paint line. While I was working on the newer Marathi, I noticed that the wing and head were kind of separated. Not something I noticed until the paint started going down, but nothing too terrible. I was able to just pop off her head and hair and one of the wings. And it turned out to be perfect because I could airbrush the hair without worrying about getting any paint on the red cloth. The large snake Marathi has a mix of a kind of teal green and a turquoise. So I'm going to use those colors across all of the models as the main accent to the red. The hair on all the models and some of the cloth. That way it looks like when she changes into the snake, 
all the colors change with her. Once the head gets put back on, it looks as good as new. Sweet bonus sub-assembly right there. Next up will be the third major color on the models. All of the metallics will be a bright gold and eventually get washed down with some red shade. There isn't much for leather or wood on any of these, but they all have similar staff that they carry. And the handles get a base coat of Arbuckle's brown, a purple brown that looks really great for wood or leather. And because it's gotten lots of purple in it, the shading of purple on the model works really well with that color. The skin on all of the models I pretty much saved for last. I base coated with a dark pink flesh tone and followed that up with pin washes and glazes of a reddish purple. And finally, I used a pale flesh that was just a little brighter than the base coat to define the features on the faces. Being able to drop the shading under the cheeks and into the eyes gives you a lot more control over the final look compared to a traditional skin wash. I personally prefer to paint faces in by hand and not rely on a wash to show me where those recesses are. But if you have a wash for skin, then don't worry about it. Just don't overload the face to try and get that color strong from the start. Water it down or dilute it with medium to just get that paint a little darker than the base coat. Then come back in with your original color and put that paint on the forehead, cheekbones, down the nose, and on the bottom lip. As long as the wash doesn't pool on the face, you can still get really great results. I almost completely forgot that all these models have some sort of gloves or latex pants on. So I came in with a nice blue black and layered over some gray for the highlights. Can't forget the latex, you know. I think that about does it for these three models. And for the most part, they are pretty straightforward minis, which are my favorite kind of minis. And what I love most of all is that you can see how the older model translates into the newer one, even if it wasn't sculpted by the same person. The inspiration is definitely there. The Crocodile Games Hecate though, it's just so clear to me that this is just a better version of an older model. I don't know if that was intentional. I guess I could have just asked Fitz when I saw him at Adepticon, maybe at the next convention. But even if it wasn't intentional, there are lines and skills that he has that just shine through the ages and are at their best on newer models like this one. And I just love seeing that skill improved over time and still being used today. There are lots of sculptors and artists that have worked at Games Workshop, but in many cases, they've also worked for other companies too, or even started their own. If you like their work, it's a great idea to look for more of it. Chances are that you like their mini because of the way it looked, not necessarily because it was a Warhammer model. When I stumble onto a range of models that I like and I feel like I need to paint, it sometimes just happens that those models were sculpted by someone that I've already gotten other models from in the past. It's never really been the universe that sold me on a mini, but aesthetics that transcend any game system and come out of specific artists. And that feels like something special that we need to keep in mind, separating the artist from the game. If you like a model, look for more sculpted by that person. You're probably gonna be surprised that there are lots more like it out there waiting for you to paint. And they feel like they were sculpted just for you by that sculptor, and you didn't even know that they were still working today. Thank you again for joining me on another Miniature Rescue. If you liked something about this video, please consider hitting that like button, sharing this video with your hobby friends, and subscribing for more Miniature Rescues. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. And of course, here are the final shots of all of those lovely Marathi Minis. Thanks again.